Oh, hey, check this out. Do any of you have regular thrifting routes that you take? I know a lot of you aren't lucky enough to have as many thrift stores as we have in town. We have hundreds, it's kind of insane. But over the last couple years of making these daily videos, when we go thrifting, we've kind of fallen into very specific routes that we go on. And we're starting at this Goodwill today because it's basically on the road that goes to the center of our town and there's several Goodwills off of it. So we're gonna drive up the middle of it and go to a couple, stick around. Round one, fight. Hopefully this is in good shape, we'll get it. Okay, that just looks like some sticky foam that can come off. These hard solid blade lightsabers are the better sellers. There was a time, even before we had this channel, where I had a buck, a big box. I mean, 40, 50 lightsabers that I was trying to sell at an antique mall and stuff. And uh, they didn't really move very fast. These do, these will go pretty quick. The dish section at this Goodwill is usually like hit or miss. So I find some good stuff here though. They've always got something good to look at. It's kind of pretty. I mean, it's nothing fancy. It's just, I like that color. Oh, this is cute. 349. I don't know, that might be worth a pickup. It's really cute. I think putting it in my antique mall booth would do well. This little canister. What'd you find? I found the best thing I've ever found in my life. What is? Oh my god! <laughs> Wacky Whoa. wave into an inflatable arm, dude, man! <laughs> Two bucks. Consider it mine. Oh my god. <laughs> I think he's suffering from low battery draw, but behold. He has a switch for AC and DC, so I bet if I plug up a nine volt to that, he's gonna fly. Also, this buzz gun looks both awesome and vintage. We need to look that up. So I did end up picking up that little owl mug. It's got like a little loose tea leaf filter in it. I think it'd be really good for a um, French press as well, because you get a little grains whenever you're using a French press. I like to always sift those out beforehand. Now I'm in the teapot section. This caught my eye. This is really cute. Very carnival-esque. I think that's the best thing on this rack. I don't think I'm gonna get the little carnival teapot, but it is really cute. This little owl back there is kinda cute too. Here's an interesting find. That is a little false graph. Uh, I think the pattern's called Winterberry. It's a little strainer. I don't think I've ever seen that before. 349's not bad. I know people collect this set. It's not my favorite, though. I bet if I put it in the booth, it would do fine, but it'd probably sit for a while, so I'm probably not gonna get it. I do love a vintage strainer, though. The little, like, um, enamel on top of it is quite nice, and they're very durable, but, uh, I think I'm gonna leave that one behind. Check out this gaming keyboard I found. It's like, I don't know, it's cool. It's got cherry switches on it, it's got programmable buttons. I kind of feel like I should get it. I think it'd be cool. It, it doesn't have LEDs, which doesn't matter that much, but you know I like my keyboards to light up. <laughs> I knew when I picked this up and popped the key off and it had cherries, it was probably gonna be a little bit valuable, but the more I stand here and look at it, I think this might be really valuable. That's awesome. Hello. Yeah, I like it a lot. I never see something like that. This is funny. Have you seen this? I was looking at it. You ever seen out on the the road, they'll be on the side of the road uh -huh. with dances. Ah! <laughs> there you go. 
we're in a bit of a hurry to get to the next Goodwill because we don't want to lose our momentum, but stick around. I'm going to look up that keyboard here in a little bit. We're going to find out together how much it's worth. I, it kind of doesn't matter how much it's worth because we're probably going to keep it. Be, and I'll explain this later when we get home. But that keyboard is so perfect for one of our gaming setups at home. And I'll explain why later. But do stick around for that because I think we might all be surprised how much it's worth. See, I'm saying all this. Watch it be worth like five bucks. <laughs> I have a deep love-hate relationship with this Goodwill. They always have good stuff, but it's in a higher end part of town, so they want to charge a bunch of money for the same stuff that you can get in the middle of town for like $5. But that being said, they do have good stuff, so gotta come anyway. I just found a pair of white jeans that would be perfect for color blocking, but it's Rip Fam. Not paying $25 for those. No, thank you. Hopefully we can find something else that isn't very expensive. Some vintage. No, nope, just look like vintage. Universal thread. Target's doing a very good job making lots of things look vintage and look better quality. I'm not gonna lie to you. Target's doing pretty good. This is cute. I don't know what it is, but I like it. It looks handmade. 100% handmade. It's a really cute set. $14.99. Not worth it, but someone did a good job with it. We got triple Skylanders. Are all three of them not for resale? Yep. <laughs> is that really all the video games we get? Skylanders? Ooh. Mafia, though. 329 bot. That's a that's a super buy. Oh baby, now I'm finding the good stuff. No manual, but I don't have it, so I'm gonna buy it. Oh, oh, oh. It's a good day. I'm happy with the choices that I've made. The thrift gods have blessed me. <laughs> There's a random manga dollar bot. Just gonna buy it all. Give it all to me. I'm gonna triple check this game. I'm gonna triple check all this for more games. And I'll get back to you. I walked over here to go to the dish section, but there is a bazillion people in the aisle right now, so we're just gonna give them a minute. But while I was giving them a minute, I spotted this teeny tiny plant stand. Look how cute this is. Wicker is very popular right now amongst the boho community. Um, it's only five dollars. I think, I think it's worth that. I could probably put it in my booth for about 20 bucks or so. Maybe a little bit more, maybe like 25. But um, she's cute. I think we'll uh, we'll rescue her from her quiet, sad corner. Ooh, Big Mally. Six bucks, you know, he's uh, I think whatever this stuff is is gonna come off pretty easy, so I'll probably get him. Do you know who Maui is? He's the rock. Demigod in all the South Pacific. With okay. his magical fish hook, he slowed down the sun. Which you're missing. Battled monsters. And I should know. Because I'm Maui. Perfect. I don't know. I should probably get him. He sells really, really well at my antique mall. I'll put him in there two or three times, and he's pretty much gone same day when I do. Uh, bag toys, though. These bikes are interesting. They are. Cast iron, it's like a tandem. I feel like there's probably some value there, but I have no idea what this is. I'll have to look that up. It looks special. All right, we got one aisle a little bit cleared out. I wanted to come check out this section. This is where the glass speaking stuff is. This is really cute, but it is Pioneer Woman from Walmart. She's got a lot of cute stuff though. We'll give her that, but it's not valuable. This is cute too. Little measuring spoon set from Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel has cute stuff. Oh, that's plastic. I expected that to be glass and way heavier. Oh, it's a vintage Pyrex, but it is completely stripped of color. That's a shame. Those are cool. All right, better check the bag wall in case there's any Bratz dolls that I have to take home. 
Definitely a lot of dolls here. Some uh, obscenity. A little stormtrooper missing his arms. Elsa and some My Little Ponies. Seems fitting. Well, these are cute. They're little Kelly dolls. You know those days when you leave the house to thrift with low expectations and then you just come home with crazy stuff. Those days are pretty awesome. They're pretty great. I, uh, I got a lot today. These games are mostly going to my collection. A couple of them are for resale. They were just really cheap. I searched that whole DVD rack over a few times and pulled some more games out of there. But uh, we left with one, two, three, four, five of them. And uh, I'm exceedingly excited to get home and play with this keyboard. Oh, I see you're going for the old Ikea bag and a smart car boot trick. <laughs> sure. That's how I get down. Here, I'll get the stuff from up front. Pretty stoked about this buzz gun too. I haven't found a year on it, but I'm pretty sure this is from my childhood. It's really cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll look that up later too. I like it. All right, I promised you when we get home, we'd look at this keyboard together. So let's go ahead and look it up. Kinesis Gaming. Uh, free Style Edge. I think that should do it. There is a model number here, but okay. So right off the bat, you can buy this keyboard for $215. There was one posted for $98 with zero bids, $302. So right off the bat, these are listed really high. And the fact that there's multiple ones listed pretty high usually means that there's a reason. Usually if you Google it, there's one posted high, it's either because it's the only one there, so someone's trying to capitalize on the market, right? But it also happens when there's there'll be a bunch of cheap ones and then one person will just post one that's expensive for not really a lot of reason but what's really going to matter in this instance instance is what they've sold for right off the bat 200 bucks 185 215 so that one sold for 215 that's pretty awesome so we've got something pretty good here before we just rush off and sell it though uh we're going to put it to use and there's really nothing better than a good keyboard. So the reason that we're gonna try this one out, uh, two reasons, listen to this. Hannah hates how loud our keyboard is. This one's still loud because it does have mechanical switches. However, it's, uh, it's not as loud. I need a key, a key puller, but there you go. They've got browns and I think they're genuine switches. Which is pretty cool. The the switches on here are not genuine, they're aftermarket, but yeah. This has genuine brown switches on it, which is really cool. So we're gonna keep it and try it for a little while because Hannah wants, this is Hannah's rig, by the way. Uh, Hannah wants to try something a little quieter that doesn't feed back through her microphone so bad. Uh, but there's another reason we're gonna use it, and it's because this particular computer is also the setup we do our live shows on Sundays, 10 p.m. Eastern. Set your calendar, set, set a reminder. And this right here is really important. There are eight keys here that are programmable with macros. So I can basically make those eight keys do whatever I want. And that is really awesome. So now we can set, set our cameras. We've got three camera angles in here and I basically use each camera for two for close up and wide. So it's essentially six different buttons we need to hit to switch between camera angles. So there you got, there you go, there you got it. I don't know what I was trying to say. You got it, there you go. Um, so we're going to use it for that too. This computer will be set up to switch camera angles. So eventually when we are doing more crazy stuff with our live shows, we'll probably have somebody right here on their own webcam talking to us and switching live. Right now I do it with a wireless remote in my hand, but this is the kind of thing that I want for that. So before we wrap up and talk about the rest of the stuff we got, let me go ahead and plug this bad boy in. I'm going to unplug this old keyboard. We'll probably put this old keyboard in our antique mall or something because I have been selling game stuff like this for a little while in our antique mall. I've sold several gaming mice, mouses, mooses, many much more moose. Meeson. Right. Meeson. You got your votes, Meeson? <laughs> gaming Meeson. I'm with you. I can't quite get my big fingers in there. There we go. Did it light up? Yeah, briefly. It lit up and then stopped. Oh, it's preparing some software. Device is ready, Freestyle Edge. 
We're gonna figure this out. Cause they definitely light up. They've all got LEDs behind them. And it's got a bunch of buttons for switching between, or if there's drivers or something. Let's type with it real quick. This is weird. Kinesis, this is really weird. Kinesis Gaming, let's try drivers. How can we help you? Warranty coverage, returns, support for my device. Select the device. Freestyle Edge RGB. So we don't know if this is the RGB. This is probably just a solid color one then, you think? Maybe. When it lit up, it only lit up kind of bluish. Oh, okay, so this is this one. So it turns out, and I didn't know this when we were first looking it up, there's RGB models and regular solid blue models, and this one appears to be the blue one. So it's still equally valuable, to be honest, but I kind of had wished it been <laughs> RGB, but that's fine. That's not what we're really looking for. Again, we're just looking for these keys here. So how do I access the smart map? So I'm sitting here looking up tutorials on how to get it on. Open the V drive on a Windows or Mac computer. What is V drive? See label on underside. So in order to download the software, it wants me to type in a code on the keyboard. It's interesting, isn't it? KB950. I've got to think so hard about typing on this thing just because my hands are so far apart. Okay, so it wants me to type this button plus F8. Setting up device for setting up Freestyle Edge keyboard. And now when that's done, I need to rescan. There's a problem with this drive. Scan the drive and fix it now. Scan for the video. Okay. To program, first select a key by clicking on the keyboard image. Remap. Tap the desired action on the keyboard to use the special action button. Okay, so what it turns out I've just realized what's going on. The reason that this keyboard is actually special is because I can actually reprogram all of it. Now this is really cool because something that I could do is have this on either side of a regular keyboard and basically map all of these keys to do something different inside of a software that I want it to. So in our software that we use to record our video games or, or broadcast our live shows, I can actually make any of these buttons basically do whatever I want. Not all keyboards and mice have this uh, ability. Some keyboards come with just a few buttons that can do it, some can do all of it, but that's pretty much it, and that's really cool. That makes this really useful for someone like us that does a lot of things on computers. Or I can have this keyboard beside my editing computer and I can start mapping all these buttons to do different cool editing things. That's pretty cool. Really right now, I just want the lights to come on. The light's off. Come here, check this out. Right, off now, come back, and we're gonna turn it on to max. Hey. Got it. Wow, that took a lot. That took a whole lot. Now, before we uh, move on to wrapping up this video, let me give you one more tip. I don't give a ton of tips on this channel, but here's one you really need to hear. Any keyboard that you see, if you're worried about resale, any keyboard that you see in a Goodwill that has an ergonomic design, ergonomic, 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 you want to at least look it up. Now, this isn't going to be all the time. There's plenty of ergonomic mice that are trash. There's quite a few ergonomic keyboards that are trash. But I knew this was probably going to be special because I could see kind of from a distance that it had quality keys and that it was an ergonomic design. That, that doesn't mean it was going to be useful to me, but I've just done this enough and bought enough random keyboards to know that things that are set up to be ergonomic with these rests, they're, they're often sought after. Because think about how many jobs in the world there are that are people sitting at a desk typing. So the stuff that works with ergonomic designs actually sells really well. This is, I, I know this to be true. Um, I take a look at every uh, keyboard when we go to the Goodwill bins that has any kind of weird design. They're always gonna be worth a look up. That's your pro tip for the day. Is that on camera? All right, we got 25 minutes, I think we can handle that. All right, we're back home. Okay, we're back home and I think today's haul was pretty good. Of course, we just talked at length about that keyboard and we actually played Minecraft for like an hour afterwards and uh, what's your review after an hour of playing with it? It's good. I keep accidentally turning the little lights off because it like, it's next to the control button, which it's it's a learning curve. Like there's a button to turn all the lights off? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> there's a lot to it. I've set and typed a few things out like emails and stuff on it and that, 
I get used to it, but there's something weird about your brain going ASD. You know what I mean? Yeah. ASD, JK. It's weird when your hands face out, but it was cool. Find of the day, I think. Yeah, definitely. I, we, if we could find something better, we'll just trade it off at this point. But right now, we're going to sell the old one, keep that, and maybe we'll get rid of it. Maybe we won't. What else did you find today? I found this little tea set, this little owl mug with a little owl on top. That is wonderful. Oh, and it's got a strainer inside? It does, so you can put your loose tea leaves in there and then strain them out. That's very cool. It's super nice. That is quite wonderful. I oh. love it. Uh, okay, I, I, I got some random stuff. Did you break it? It's a little tape residue stuck to my finger, it's fine. <laughs> I bought these Ultra Pro Magic the Gathering life point counters, I guess that's what they're called. I mean, you call them life points in Yu-Gi-Oh! I don't remember what they're called, just life in Magic. But there's several of them. And uh, I realized when editing this video in part, I didn't get a good shot of them because I accidentally left my camera on. Uh, time lapse. Oops. Because I'm a dummy. It happens. But uh, I figured because of that I'll show them off now. Some of them are really cool. I haven't looked them up. Uh, it's just something I bought because I'm going to put in my Magic the Gathering collection that I have for our other channel. And uh, if they're valuable though, if we look them up later after the video and they're like, oh, that's crazy, maybe I'll flip them. But I just love this kind of stuff. It's a couple of that one in there. Really cool though, huh? Yeah. Are they like holographic? Uh, yeah, kind of, but they're for counting stuff. I don't know what they're, yeah, they're cool. I like them. Uh, any of you Magic the Gathering players out there, comment below and explain exactly what they are, where they came from. Uh, what, what's up with this basket? Do you know what this is? No, I don't know if I know what it is off the top of my head, but I do know my grandmother had a bunch of them around when I was a kid. She would set random stuff on them or use them as like tables. They are much bigger ones, obviously. Yeah, they are plant stands, but I guess dual purpose. You could use it as a trash can if you wanted to, or a clothes basket. Yeah. If they were it, again, if it were bigger, I just I picture the ones my grandmother had huge. Yeah, my parents had one that was like giant. It was like a full table, um, and they used it as their nightstand. So it reminds me of them. But it's really cute. I can see that now that you say that it being a plant stand that fits. Um, Buzz light your gun. It's got a bunch of buttons. I feel like that's a nice collectible piece. It's really unique. I don't necessarily collect buzz stuff. I've been keeping some of the more odd ones, and I've always had this fantasy of making a like a color blocked buzz of a bunch of random ones. But like this is really the only buzz I have in my collection. Uh, I mean, I've got a basket of the basic ones over there, but. Uh, I bought a bunch of video games today, and we're actually going to get to the craziest part of the day after the video games, but Ben 10, Alien Force, uh, Safari Rescue, something I didn't have in my collection, so I bought it, why not? Airblade, a game I didn't have, Mafia, not a rare game or anything, but something I've been wanting a copy of, and this I didn't know if it was going to be valuable or not, because I just, I've never actually came across this, you know? I've got six, seven hundred PS2 games. That's a large portion of the shovelware nonsense out of the way. But uh, Iridium Runners, not really worth much either, like three bucks or something on price charting. But happy to have it nonetheless. It looks like something I should try out. And then a random manga. Nice. Yeah, nothing, nothing special. Tokyo Pop Sneaks. So we put a bunch of that stuff in our antique roll too. Now. Is this going to be real five of the day? Ooh. I have plugged it into a 9 volt charger. So you've seen it on battery. Okay. Now let's see it. That's it, that's it on battery. It's kind of a sad affair. Lame. Are you ready for it on 9 volt? Yeah. <laughs> it works exactly as it's supposed to. Ready to do the dance? Go. <laughs> it's pretty spot on your hair makes it even better i will say i'm a little bit disappointed how loud it is yeah because how cool would that be in like the background like if i left it back here going that'd be so good you know what you could though you could put a fan in the thing somewhere else and tunnel the air in yeah it'd make a little less noise because it's definitely the fan making the noise good fall I love how, at a certain <laughs> interval, it like catches so much air and just stands straight up, and then it eventually loses it. 
That's so awesome. I didn't know they made those, but I'm also not surprised. So that's definitely going to get plugged up and left in here somewhere. Uh, what's what's your favorite thing for real though that we brought home today? Well, my favorite thing of the things I grabbed today is ooh, that's tough. I guess this because I just really like it. The plant stand is really cute though. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to have to go. I mean, the keyboard was just surprising. I didn't expect that. But this is so awesome. <laughs> it's so silly. It would only be better if it were yellow. Yeah. Will you guys comment below and let us know what your favorite thing we brought home today was. Also, before we get out of here, let me let you in on a couple things. We do have a public Discord where you can not only come chat with us, but you can also come post your thrifted or yard sale or flea market pickups. Pretty please come over to the Discord and show us what you've been finding. Also, hashtag those posts, hashtag Trash Life uh, on one of our live shows real soon, which happens on Sunday. Come hang out with us on Sunday. but. Uh, We'll be giving away some of this uh, Trash Panda merch. We're basically releasing a new t-shirt monthly or every two months. And then right before it goes out, we'll sell like one of the last ones. Or we'll give away one of the last uh, few left over to some of you guys for those hashtag Trash Life posts on social media. So we want to see what you got. Uh, and if you don't want to post anything, still go over to Instagram or over to our Discord and search for that hashtag. And you can actually see everyone else's posts come up for that. It's pretty awesome the way that it works. Uh, but that's going to be it, guys. We do post daily videos on this channel, so we'd love to see you tomorrow. Hit the subscribe button. Help us get to 15,000 subs. We're on our way there. You can actually subscribe to this channel by pushing this button right here. And then you can also click this video over Hannah's face to check out this really cool Beyblade video that I made. And then check out this video below that. And YouTube will suggest something random from our channel that it thinks you might like. So until tomorrow, guys, peace out. Mm -hmm.